Hello everyone, this is how to set up a GoDaddy SQL Server. Okay, first off, with the GoDaddy SQL Server, you must get into the cPanel. The cPanel is new. Um, they have a couple others, so make sure you have the cPanel. Uh, next thing is, is we're going to go to the database wizard. This is a way to set up a database so you can connect to your GoDaddy uh, server. Let's call it... Um, video test, right? And this is something you got to remember the name of it. Oh, video test already exists. Video test. One, two, three, four. Username. I'm going to call it uh, So I gotta write this down so I can remember this because this is how we're gonna connect. All right, then it says to access all the privileges. So these give you all the privileges that um, that you want you want your user to do. All right, so video test one, two, three, four was created. Now let's go see if it's in my cPanel. Click on home, all right. Now we go to databases because we went to the database wizard, which gives us a uh, username, password, login, creates the database. All right, so you can see I have a couple of them, but you can see here's video test and here is your username. Now this is a, this is a username that was given uh, for GoDaddy purposes so they can access things if, if you like lose your GoDaddy. Now you can delete it. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I trust GoDaddy. So here we go. Now let's see if we can run a script to see if we can connect to this, right? And put something into the database. So you go to PHP my admin. Now why do you want to go to PHP my admin? Is because this is kind of the control board for your um, to see if to see if everything's working. Now you can see right here it is here and we have nothing created, right? We have nothing created. But let's see if we can connect. We can still connect and see if we can, you know. See if it's live. So the way we do this, we go back to a file manager. All right, and it doesn't matter. I I personally picked, uh, you know, this is this is my this is the Jaws clan right here, right? This is my um, file. So let's make a new one and let's call it test. Now test one two dot php. Now, why do we want PHP? Because that's what connects us to our server. All right, then you go here, once it's created, and you go code edit. All right, so then we have to start writing code here. So the first thing we do is we go document type dit.html, right?
All right, so this is normal HTML, right? Now, here's where the PHP is going to come in. First, uh, to initiate PHP, we, we do a question mark and then the words PHP. Well, this is, a this is going to be a firing mechanism for the uh, browser. So anything in this code with the question marks, right? It's the, kind of like you can think of them as a slash. It just kind of says, oh, I, I, this is PHP. So the first thing you need to do is you need to connect to your server. So let's go, let's make a variable. Now this variable accepts three arguments. Okay, well what are those three arguments? Well the first argument is the server. Okay, well how do you find the server name? Well at first this is tough for me. I was like, well what's, this? I, I gotta connect with an IP address, right? You can do it that way. But, the, but remember, your files are on the GoDaddy server. So if the files are on the GoDaddy server, then we can call it localhost because first they connect to your website, which is on your GoDaddy server stuff, right? And then they click on something, and when they click on something, that PHP gets activated, and boom, you get a local host. So let's pick that. All right, next is your username. My username was video test one two three four. All right, then this is the password that you would like to, uh, that you put in. All right, and then this is the, the uh, database that you're trying to connect to. The database was called one, two, video test one, two, three, four. Right, so let's just make sure we have everything going. So how can we make sure? We go back to here, back to databases. All right, so my database name is video test one two three four. My also my username is video test one two three four, right? And my password was video test one two, just to kind of mix things up. Um, and then we have the local host because we're connecting, we're in my server, right? But we have that local host. This is the username. This is the password. This is the database. All right. Now we got to end with a semicolon. All right. Now we go again. Let's check the connection. If the connection fails, let's, let's understand why, okay? And tell me why, okay? That's what I'm going to write next. All right. So first off, there's you got to understand if it if it uh, fails to connect, I want to know why. So um, this is this is the fail to connect, right? This is an er connect arrow, um, and as soon as it, it connects, it's going to run this loop. Okay. So this loop would be what echo. You could do anything. You could do echo. You know, f fail to connect, right? But, uh, and that, this will work fine, but you can also add something else, um, which is this uh, right here, um, which is going to allow you to tell you, it'll tell you what the error is. Okay, well, maybe wrong password, or maybe it just doesn't connect or something. It has a whole bunch of libraries, right?
All right, so what's it going to do? It's going to tell me it failed to connect, and it's going to tell me what failed. All right, so now, well, what happens if it, if it does connect? Well, let's, let's check that. All right, so this right here is using this uh, variable and plugging it in to see if it pings. If, if the ping comes back, well, then your connection's okay. So let's go echo connection okay. All right, now what happens, it, so this this one right here tells me that it failed connect alt, altogether, meaning that uh, maybe a database wasn't wasn't there or um, it, it's just, it's just not, it, the computer does not see this. This says, okay, I connected, right? But what happens if you connected but you still have something wrong? That's, we need one more air handle, right? All right, then we use the dot function and we're gonna use another air handle, right? Well, what are we gonna air handle? We're gonna air handle this uh, variable, okay? All right, so let's let's double check over this before, and, and it allows you to, you guys to type things in. Okay, so first off, connection, right? We made a variable. We're going to connect to my local host again. This is the username. This is the password, and then this is the database name. Okay, so we know that that is correct. If they do, I hope so. Okay, if the error, if it doesn't see the database at all, it's going to throw this error. If it does see right, and it does get pinged back, then say connection okay. Well, that's cool, right? Then, actually, I want a capital C here. All right, then, um, if it, let's just say it sees it, but you have a wrong password, right? Well, it's going to show you this error, and let's demonstrate to see if, if everything uh, works correctly, okay? So, let's save this. Now, how do you access this? Well, I access this by going up here and going php jawsclan.com. Okay, so I know I made it PHP test, so it could be anything. So um, this is kind of like your root directories, right? jawsclan.com. Word slash, let's go test.php, right? test12.php. Let's see. Look at that. Connection okay. So what does that mean? That we connected to our server. Now, 
let's go back to our little file and let's change something. Let's change the password to three. Save the connection. Now, what should we see? We should see some sort of error handling, right? The error is going to be thrown right here. And why not here? Because it can connect to the local host. It can connect to the uh, database, right? It can also see the username, but the password is wrong. So we should get some sort of error that says something along the password. Let's see. We go back to this and we hit refresh. Look at that. Failed to connect. Access to denied. User. Okay. Using password. Yes. Error. So what does that tell you? Something's wrong with the password. Well, that's good, right? All right. Let's change this to delete that. Now, here's another thing. How are we going to get this error thrown? Well, this error can be thrown in, in many ways, but one of the easiest ways is, is you just come in here and just push different localhost, right? Let's see the difference. So I should see failed to connect and not the error that we received. See, we received a error, right? Let's see what we should see a failed to connect. All right, so it did throw the fail to connect. So it actually threw two errors. And I don't know if you noticed that before, but it, it had two different errors. So it had a fail to connect and an unknown MySQL server host, local host too. So, so you can see, you're like, well, if you see this unknown MySQL server host, this is what's throwing it. All right, so just go back to here, delete this. All right, we've seen all two errors plus we've seen the, the connection okay and let's see all right we're back to connection okay well i hope this helped you out um stay tuned and we'll bring in some more mysql server stuff all right